Yeah, I think that's an image we'll remember. <laughs> Without the falling. <laughs> All right, it's good to be here tonight and I appreciate the opportunity to stand again and, and be in front of the church tonight. And uh, so we appreciate uh, you all coming out tonight and being a part of our service here at Springdale. Going to look tonight, uh, if I could, uh, Alex and I had lunch yesterday and uh, I told him, I said, I, was, I think I was going to preach on John chapter three, be born again. But the Lord kind of shifted gears yesterday afternoon. And uh, so if you got your Bibles, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. I want to bring a message, if I could, tonight, uh, Lord willing, with his help uh, regarding uh, the thought of unity and, and take it just a step farther a little bit and uh, walking in harmony together. We're living in a day and time in our country that I often wonder if uh, if we go back and look at the time before the Civil War where the, the same stress and tension within this union that we live in uh, going on between two separate groups of people or parties uh, along the way. So I think it's important for the church. Paul addresses it in Ephesus uh, here in Ephesians about unity in the body of Christ. And uh, also, uh, if we take a look at that tonight. So if you found your place in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, if you would, let's just stand for a few verses of reading tonight to honor the Word of God. This is a passage that I've chosen tonight. Uh, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Let's read that again. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. You know, oftentimes, you know, when we're... Re- yes, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Okay. Yeah, in the New King James Version. But. <laughs> <laughs> so be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and when we're leading our children you know we want them to uh, to follow normally by our examples of what we're setting and uh, so this is this kind of but then he goes on to say and walk in love as Christ also has loved us has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. So in this thought, if you would, uh, just flip back to Ephesians chapter 4. Because this is really where Paul starts addressing about the unity of the body and the believer. And we look in... Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And so there's this thought of unity. And, and if we could tonight, let's just take our minds and let the Holy Spirit just kind of guide us tonight in this thought of unity of the body of Christ as believers. But I also want to kind of not only in unity, but in harmony and trying to get us to think upon that tonight. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight before we begin. Father, once again, Lord, we bow before your throne of grace, thanking you for the day that you've given us, thanking you for the opportunity to stand tonight. I pray, God, that you would just lead and guide us, open our hearts, open our minds, that you'd not bring distractions to us, 
that you'd help us to focus and meditate upon your word tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'd lead and guide us in all these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated tonight, if you would. So what is the difference in walking in unity versus walking in harmony? Uh, if I could give you an illustration, and i got to just give you an illustration that I know and that, that comes to my mind. Uh, many of you know I served in the Army, and uh, I was in a young man when I went in, I went to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Called it Fort Lost in the Woods. <laughs> but here I am, and, and on, on almost the first day, I met this guy from Buffalo, West Virginia. I knew where West Virginia was, but I never heard of Buffalo, West Virginia, until I met Tom Hurley. Tom Hurley was a guy that was there, and one thing you, they, they tell you when you first go in, when you're getting all your hair cut, you know, shaved off, and you're getting all of your gear that you need, they tell you, you know, don't stand out. Blend in. You know, you, you don't want to be noticed when you're in basic training. And so here I have the privilege of meeting Tom Hurley. And they began to teach us how to march. In unity, they wanted us go in one place, one direction. And so we're getting out and we're going to places and we're marching along, you know, and you, you get that rhythm, lift, 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 right, lift, 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 right, lift. And you understand, you know, basic, most people, has a basic understanding of their left and right. <laughs> Tom Hurley did not. <laughs> if there was anybody I ever saw that resembled Gomer Pyle, <laughs> it was Tom Hurley. I may never see this guy again in my lifetime, but I got the privilege to spend four months with him at Fort Leonard Wood, and then we went on to Fort Lee, Virginia, the AIT school, and he happened to come along where I went. <laughs> But they called him Mountain Man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it was. He slumped over anyway, but he just could not. Could not get that beat left, right, left, you know. <laughs> but that, that's what the military wanted. It's kind of like, you know, I've never been in band. I always played sports. So I, I, I was never in a marching band. But, but I assume it's somewhat similar. You know, not only do they want you going in one direction, but they want you to be in sync when you're going in that direction. And I don't even understand, sometimes these marching bands, when I see them perform, they're going in eight different directions at one time, but it all looks good. And as long as they're performing what they need to do, they're not only walking in unity, but they're walking in harmony. And it's almost a beautiful sight to see, but unity is the state of being united or joined as a whole. Tonight, we're united here in one place. We're together. But that doesn't always mean that we're in harmony. Matter of fact, when we leave here, we'll be leaving in separate vehicles going in different ways. But unity, the definition of it itself, is the state of being united or joined as a whole. Harmony, the definition is agreement or concord, progression, and having a pleasant effect. The thing you learn early in, in life is about not only unity, but harmony. I also thought of this illustration, you know, when, when you're singing, especially if it's four-part harmony, <laughs> you gotta be singing really bad and off-key for me to notice. But you all know my brother Brian. Brian, as soon as he hears something that's off, he has a, some people have a different ear to music and listening. He'll tell you real quick that you're off and he don't care to tell you you're off if he's leading that singing. But that harmony, I, I like it if it just blends together and it kind of sounds good together, I can't tell. I mean, we, the few times that they've allowed me to sing with them, being my siblings, they just say, Ron, just sing lead. We'll join in there somewhere. <laughs> they don't ask me to pull apart because I can't sing on just, a, just on a bass or just on a 
soprano, like I could ever sing soprano. <laughs> but tenor, <laughs> I can't just stay there. I'm, I'm, I'm up and down. I'm around somewhere. They say, just take a lead. We'll join in with you. <laughs> we'll harmonize. Because I, I don't have the ear for it nor the ability, obviously. But you can tell when it's off, and that's what I want to kind of focus on tonight. Unity and harmony are different. They are different aspects. We are to walk in unity, but also walk in harmony. Paul addresses in chapter 5 here, he talks about walking in love in verses 1 through 6. He talks about walking in light, verses 8 through 14. He talks about walking in wisdom in verses 15 through 21. But there is a difference in the unity to walk in unity, but also walk in harmony. And Paul addresses some of the areas here of that. And so as I looked in through this passage and was looking at it, I, I looked at a few things here that I wanted to just kind of share with you tonight that God gave me to look at. To think about unity and harmony and not only just in unity, but it's so important, I think, that God has impressed me on this tonight, that in the church, it's not just about being in unity, but it's about being in harmony in, in the relationship that we have in Jesus Christ. And so as we look at these things, one of the things that stood out was verse 18 of chapter 5. Be not drunk with wine, we're in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. You want to be out of harmony real quick? <laughs> Get involved in alcohol or any drug that is something that's going to control us. It'll take us out of harmony very quickly. I was just thinking the other day, just a few years ago, it seems like that I walked in, especially in Tennessee, and I, I looked when they passed the law, and I go into Food City sometimes to pick up something, and it seems like, you know, I'll go down towards the bread aisle, but then the next aisle over used to be, uh, and I said occasionally, it's the wine aisle. And I always think to myself, who drinks this much wine? That we've got two to three shelves, rolls full of wine. <laughs> That's what my thought was, <laughs> them, them drinking Baptists. But my point is, when he's talking about not only walking in unity, but walking in harmony, resist the wine. Be not drunk with wine or alcohol wherein it's in excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. The Spirit. i got to confess with you tonight, I've been drunk on alcohol. I've been drunk on the Holy Spirit. I prefer the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Any day of the week and twice on Sundays. So it's talking about, you know, in the case of this in harmony, be ye filled with the Spirit. Verse 19, look at verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Pastor kind of touched on this this morning. You know, saying something good to your soul, speaking to your soul. Sometimes, you know, I don't want to embarrass Alex in any way, but... We were coming down the road yesterday. We went out to lunch. And I don't know if he'll go with me again because we ended up in Kentucky. <laughs> I picked him up at 1130. You hungry? Boy, yes. I didn't eat any breakfast hardly at all. <laughs> well, they got a great place in Kentucky. No. <laughs> we ate in Wise, Virginia, but we ended up in Kentucky. And then we ended up on the road going the wrong way in Kentucky. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> got him home. Lord washed over us, got us home safe. But, but anyway, he, he was talking about, you know, uh, some of the music that he likes, some of the gospel singing and stuff. And so he played a couple of songs there in the car, and I said, man, you keep on, we're going to have church in here. You know, when, when you start hearing, you know, sometimes the songs that remind you of how good God's been to you and what he's done to you, how he saved you by his grace, and sometimes we start singing those songs. I, I was singing a couple, you know, I was telling him about a couple that I liked. He had to endure my singing. He probably wanted to jump out in Kentucky somewhere. But, <laughs> but I was thinking, you know, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. 
And we were, I was telling him, I said, have you heard of On Time God? And Marcus ended up playing at the end of the service this morning after the pastor mentioned it. He's an on time God. Yeah. Yes, he is. Mm. Bye, bye, bye. Ah, I like it. But understanding who he is and what he's done for us and to be filled with that spirit and to understand, you know, the goodness of God and how good he's been to us. He didn't have to be, but he was good to us. And I hope you understand that tonight, but trying to understand this and be filled with the spirit. Speak to yourself in Psalms. Verse 20, I like verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I guess my, my dad, my stepdad, Don, I remember him used to say, you know, give thanks always. One time we had a wreck and uh, we were going through Sullivan Gardens around the curb and they used to didn't have guardrails, they had them wooden posts. Steering went out on his car. Here we landed going straight on the curve. Thank goodness that wooden post was there because we didn't go over. But here I was a young young boy and scared at that, but he, he always said, you know, all th things always happen for a reason. I always give God thanks for whatever it is. And come with that story young, and I have to remind myself sometimes that sometimes when we're going through the valley of things, you know, yet in the experience that we don't understand, <laughs> we got to give him thanks. That's the difference in being in Christ and unity together, but also in harmony to understand that he's in control of all things. And even when we don't understand it, we still have faith to believe that he's still sovereign. And he's in control of all things. Give him thanks for it. Then he gets into an area that kind of gets us a little... A little, uh, I don't know, it gets us a little tense, I guess, is a good word. Because he gets into relationship between husbands and wives. And, and, and there really has to be harmony within that relationship. And, and I wanted to look at that tonight because in verse 21, it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting ourselves one to another. Submit doesn't mean to surrender. The word means to yield. So there's been a lot of bad interpretation upon verses that are here, beginning with verse 21. Submit yourselves in the fear of the Lord. Be humble with each other. The key word here is submit or yielding. Important to understand the meaning of the passage here. Submit to others, one another in the fear of God. Yielding to one another. You know, it's, it's often easy for us to have conflicts. And even in difference of opinions. And Facebook has created a whole different realm for us to have conflict. But the Bible says... For us to be in unity as believers together. So we don't need to be bow-mouthing each other. We need to be in good harmony with each other, yielding to each other. We're not going to always agree with each other. I haven't met a group of Baptists yet in my lifetime that agrees all the time with one another. But there is a word here that tells us that we need to submit or yield ourselves in the fear of God. And then it's when it gets into wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And the word here means, as unto the Lord, uh, the word is yield yourselves. Then it's, God has created an economy in his creation. And in that creation that he has done, he has given man and woman a role and children a role and honestly if you don't like that you just need to take it up with God because his word gives it to us and we're to yield ourselves in the midst of this because we need harmony in it and then verse 23 says that 
Husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church and Savior of the body. It's God's economy. God's holy trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Man was created in their image. Woman from the man. Then God created the animal kingdoms, and man was to rule over, domain over that. And in the garden, the best I can read, Richard, there was perfect harmony before the fall, before sin entered in. And so in that harmony, we, we can have more harmony ourselves because when sin came in and entered into the picture, then we lost harmony. Sin breaks down harmony. There, there's, uh, the barriers are there. And when harmony breaks down, chaos comes about. We have more harmony, and I don't think we'll ever have perfect harmony on this side of heaven, but we'll have more harmony when we come and yield ourselves to the Word of God. When we come and listen to what God has in store for us to follow. And so, when I look at this and I think upon this, Even as we get out of harmony sometimes and walking in harmony, these verses are all about harmony. But we misunderstand them sometimes because, ladies, it says yield yourself to your husband. Submit or yield. Men, love your wives not as an object but as an extension of yourself. And if we would do that more often, we would see less chaos, even in relationships, and we'd be able to see more harmony provided in our homes. Heck, if we could just do it in our churches, <laughs> yield to one another, you know, not, not being the bully and the dominant one, I've got to have my way. It's my way or nothing. Instead of stepping back sometimes and just saying yielding. I like the preacher said one time, you know, he said, if, if anybody ever brought anything against him, he said, you know, there may be a resemblance of truth to that statement. <laughs> Let, let's pray about it. You know, he didn't come back, but often I've found myself sometimes becoming very defensive. When somebody's brought a charge or brought something against me, I get very defensive. But I ain't back home dealing with my brothers in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> or out in the backyard. <laughs> the Bible says, you know, that we're to have harmony and yielding one another. But the family, and I wanted to mention on this because the family sometimes is often out of harmony. Now, I know tonight probably everybody in here, you know, it's not your family. Your, your family is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Anybody listening, your family is perfect, right? It's not my family. We always try to put a pretty picture on our family. <laughs> But hey, we can easily get out of harmony. And here, here's why sometimes. Men and women get married. They have pretty good harmony. Then you get over the honeymoon stage. And you get into things, you know, that, well, that kind of irritates me a little bit. The next thing you know, out of harmony. Then... Then as a newlywed, some of you can remember that, you know, you had a baby. <laughs> That'll throw out the harmony real quick. Because oftentimes what happens, we get out of harmony with God because we take that child and the mother will put that child in front of the husband. Or the father, in very few cases, <laughs> but could be just as guilty. The father could put the child in front of the wife. And what happens when we do that, we get out of sync. Then chaos comes in because we're out of God's harmony. There's nothing that should separate a man and a woman in their relationship, not even a child. 
I remember being at Somerville Baptist Church and I did a series on idols in the least expected places. And while I was there, one of the subject matters was children. <laughs> you talk about some of the mothers getting riled. You call a child an idol <laughs> in a relationship. I thought I was going to be flogged and <laughs> bags packed and out the door. But children in America, that's a serious problem that we have, I believe. My humble opinion is that sometimes we often take children and we elevate them up into a place that they're almost on a pedestal. My little Jimmy wouldn't do that. He don't do no, nothing bad. My little Julie, mm -mm. that's not her. And we begin to get things out of order, out of the harmonic order that God has established in his word. Again, I say God didn't intend for anything to get in between a relationship of a man and a woman that he's brought together. And I say that saying I have two kids that I love dearly. I've tried to raise them with love, but I also let them know there was nothing more important than their mama. Our son, of all days that he could be born, God brought him on our anniversary. <laughs> October the 2nd, David once again will have an anniversary. We'll have our son's birthday. Now on his birthday, when there's been like milestones that I consider milestones, five years, 10 years, <laughs> we, we, might, we might get together and celebrate his birthday. It's hard to believe he's turning 30 this year, so we're, we're, we're focusing on his 30 years this year. Of course, my wife and I, you know, we'll be 33 years October the 2nd, and we've been married. But she understands, you know, now, you know, our focus on Sean. We'll, we'll have his day uh, on October the 2nd. But next year, <laughs> you're on your own, big boy. <laughs> Me and the wife will be celebrating 34 years. I'll do something with her on another day. She, she's only had to play second fiddle for just a few birthdays there. But I can always catch up because October the 5th is her birthday. <laughs> Let me just share it with you, that's, that, that's not even remotely funny. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. And some of you are probably in the same boat. You married on the birthday or around close to a birthday. Then uh, God brought her daughter, you know, in November. So I have an anniversary, I have a son's birthday, I have a daughter's birthday, and Christmas, I used to say, all in the fourth quarter. <laughs> now I've got two grandbabies coming. Guess when they're coming? October. So we'll add to the list of this few more, but I'm thankful. <laughs> Give thanks to God for all things. I am so thankful that we're having two grandbabies coming. I said, they can be born whenever God wants them to be born. They can be born on my anniversary, their birthdays, I don't care as long as they get here. But give thanks to God in all things. But a child is to be loved and nurtured, brought up in the fear of the Lord, but never replace the relationship between a husband and wife. Love your spouse. Let's listen to this, verse 31. Look at this. I think it's important. I want to continue on this thought. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh, or to come together. But then verse 32 says, This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Amen. That relationship is the same with us and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're a part of the church when we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Nevertheless, verse 33, let every one of you in particular, and particular is distinctive among other examples or cases or relating to harmony instructions is given to the kids. In chapter 6 it begins, obey your parents. Honor thy father and mother, in verse 2 and 3, which is the first commandment with promise. 
Exodus 20, 12, honor thy father and thy mother, and thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth. That's the promise that we have. So not only is it a relationship between a husband and wife as it is with Christ in the church, but also as children to be obedient. Matter of fact, you know, the Ten Commandments, and I was sitting back there with my mother before service, and I looked over here, you know, you all keep me right because the Ten Commandments are posted over here on the speaker there. But there's ten of them, and the first four, you may have heard this before, they, they deal with God. I shall have no other gods before me, shall not make unto thee any graven images, shall not the Lord take the Lord's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Those four deal with God. Then five through ten deal with others. Honor thy mother and father. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, wife, or possessions. And so those are dealing with others. It's, it's all about walking in harmony. Walking in harmony with God. Walking in harmony with others. Loving others. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you have love one to another. Amen. You have not love. <laughs> if you say you love God and you don't have love for your brother, you better check yourself is what the Bible says. You better check who you are in Christ. And, but walking in harmony. It's not just I service when others are watching. It's it's not to please man, but we're to walk in harmony because we're servants of Christ. Verse 6 of chapter 6. We do the things we do because of him. I'm not just nice to, to David because I like David. And, you know, David, David's always like me as far as I know. It's not just I'm just nice to him. I, I want to be nice to David. Heck, I, I, I even want to be nice to Judy Foster. <laughs> I tried my hardest. <laughs> my second mother. <laughs> but if as a stranger that I meet, I hope I can express even a little kindness, gratitude, and love to that person. Because that's what we're called to do as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we walk in harmony, it'll bring joy, love, peace in our lives. And I want you to hear this. You're here tonight, and I most everybody here that I know you personally. I know your testimony. I know that you talked about being saved and born again. But without Christ... There is no harmony, and you'll know it in your life. Twenty-seven years on this earth, I walked without Christ, knowing Him as my Lord and Savior. It was chaos. It was. I thought I was living. I thought I was having a good time there for a little while, but there was so much in my life that had no meaning, no harmony, until I came to know Christ. Thank. For, for salvation. Thank you for saving my soul. Now, here, here's a gospel message that I do want to share with you tonight because I was in John chapter 3. And when Jesus met Nicodemus, Jesus said, you know, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus looked at him and asked the question that I've always tried to analyze this is a very rational question. How can that happen? <laughs> how can I go back in my mother's womb and how can I be born again? Now, my mother's here tonight and I'd say she'd have no part of me wanting to go back in her womb. <laughs> I don't know if she had any part in her. <laughs> I was probably in there kicking around so much, she's probably ready to get rid of me real quick. No, seriously. It's a rational question that I think, yeah, how, how can this happen? How can I go back and be born again? And so 
over 2,000 years, we, we find that only unity is found in Christ. The gospel message talks about the one who came to give us forgiveness of our sins. The only one who can, when there's a drawing of the Holy Spirit that can change and make a dead person alive. The only way we can have unity together as a body of believers is through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other name given in which we can be saved but by the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way. And so we come to him in unity. So Nicodemus, I think one of the things I think about in Nicodemus, how can I go back in my mother's womb? How can I go back? How can somebody else make me born again? I, I think it's what I get sometimes lately out of that. What can... Even my mother, can I go back to my mother's womb? Can I physically rely upon her to give me birth again? And we're living a day and time, and I, I'll close with this tonight. We're living a day and time that there's so much chaos in the world. Unity is in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're a body of believers, and I think we can all say Amen. I can tell you tonight, and I want to share with you with all honesty, and, and, and I pray that you, you'll hear this and take it as it's meant. But we're in the time of election. You won't find harmony in man. You'll only find harmony in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Republican nominee, Donald Trump, is unable to give us harmony. The Democratic nominee, Joe Biden, is unable to give us harmony. And so many people are looking and focusing on these two individuals to try to give us harmony. Now, don't get me wrong. Every one of us are responsible. And I hope every one of us vote. But we're responsible for the democratic nation that we live in in order to vote and have our voices heard. But what I am saying is that neither one of those men is going to bring everything in peace and harmony with them. We believe, Christians, we need to stop focusing on a man to bring harmony and shame on me if I've ever allowed my focus to be there. My focus needs to be on Jesus the Christ. I need to be looking for him because he is coming again. The pastor reminded us this morning, he's coming soon. Amen. And I need to keep my eye upon him and my focus upon him and him alone. But if we can walk in harmony and lead the world as the church, instead of being led by the world, what a difference we can make. Did you hear me? If the church could lead in harmony, not just uniting together with Christ, but living what we say we believe, getting to the root of what God has called us to be, called us to be walk worthy of our vocation, our calling as he's called us, Amen. to love others. Now, I, I debated on closing with this because this is just a personal thought. It's not biblical in any way. In my lifetime, when we say sometimes we look to man for unity, in, in my lifetime uh, that I can remember, and one of them is outside of my lifetime because we had video and I could see it. I'm not going to date myself that far back. But there, there, were, there are speeches that I've heard that kind of man has attempted to bring unity that's kind of got my attention. One is John F. Kennedy, which was before my time in 1961, his inaugurational thing when he says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That's a statement that when I hear that and I see that and I say, boy, don't we need that today? Isn't that the truth? 
what can we do to help our country? I'll tell you what we believers can do. We can be in unity in Christ and we can walk in harmony with each other and not be beating each other up. Let the world see that there's a difference in the church. Let the world witness the difference in being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. The second one, I always liked Ronald Reagan, but Reagan, who, uh, it wasn't even in our country, but when he was at the Berlin Wall, Mr. Gorbachev, tear this wall down. <laughs> I was in the Army then, 1987, and, and that fired me up. I said, let's go. <laughs> I'm behind you. I'm with you. I'm ready. Then uh, I think, you know, I, I agree that anybody, anything after the World Trade Center, the terrorist attacks that we had, you know, and the unity that we had in America at that time, you know, the, just the patriotic symbolism of us being united together because we had a common enemy, not each other. <laughs> I like those speeches, but now, now the last one that I'll tell you may shock you, and the pastor may never have me back to speak again. But July the 27th, 2004, Barack Obama, hang on, don't run me off yet. If you go back and listen to his speech when he was a keynote speaker for the Democratic Convention, I remember that day and I remember that speech because you know what? It fired me up. If you go back and listen to it, originally he said there's no blue state, there's no red state, there's just the United States. He hit on so many key things that, that united and brought together. The sad part is, in my opinion again, and you may have a different opinion, in my opinion, in eight years, he didn't fulfill any of the things he said in his speech. More separation, more separation and we just continued to, to get divided more and more. I, I'm just saying tonight, church, it's, it's time for us as believers, not only to be united together, but in harmony together, that we can show the world there's a difference through Jesus Christ. The world's looking for somebody to step up. It needs to be the church. The church needs to be about doing God's will and God's business. It's not a time to be ashamed of your faith. It's not a time to be ashamed of who you are in Christ. It's a time to stand up and say, I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming again someday. I'm looking forward to his return, and I thank God for what he's done in my life. Yes. So I pray as you may be here tonight just for a little bit and a little while that you might think about just walking in harmony walking in harmony. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads just for a moment. Father, I pray, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, if you are here tonight, Lord, that you would just move, and I know you're here. I feel your presence. And maybe as I have been arguing with neighbors, people that I've known for years, stating my opinion, my beliefs, God, help me to express love. Help me to let my light shine, not only, Lord, here while I'm at church, but let it shine when I'm outside of here, these walls. God, would you bless us tonight? Would you just, Father, if there's somebody here tonight that does not know you as Lord and Savior, you know all hearts. Father, would you speak to them tonight and draw them and show them a need for a Savior? Would you give them life from the deadness of their sins and bring life? Bring harmony in their life? Maybe there's somebody here tonight that's struggling, Lord, that needs you. Needs to feel closer to you, Lord. I pray that tonight they would just release themselves and just submit themselves over to you and yield to you, Lord. Asking that you would just lead and guide us in everything that we do, Lord. Not only are we in unity with you, but Lord, I pray that you would direct us to walk in harmony with you. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.